Yeah, so this is courtesy of Hypebeast and they're debuting the new colorway of the Salehi Bembry Crocs and it's called the Pollock Croc. Is that what it's called? The Pollock Clog Sasquatch dressed in black. Is that the name of the actual shoe? The Crocs Pollock Croc. Or maybe it's just called this Crocs Pollock Clog Sasquatch. Okay, whatever. Anyway, we move. It says, um, so this is a new colorway of the, but I'm not going to read the Hypebeast article. It's always full of dross anyway. Just regurgitating stuff you can already see. But essentially, there's a new colorway of the Salehi Benbury design crocs that had, had captured everyone's imagination, mine included. And um, they look pretty sick in black. I'm not going to lie. I do kind of prefer them in the poppy colors, the bright, vibrant colors. Don't get me wrong. I think, sorry. That's the reason why maybe they capture everyone's imagination, right? The fact that they were just solid block color. They had this weird um, fingerprint design. They had a somewhat different silhouette and toe box to regular, you know, flipping um, croc sandals or whatnot. And, you know, that's what everybody kind of appealed. That's what maybe I think got everyone's kind of interested in them in the first place. But I still think in the black, you know, they have that kind of weird... You, utilitarian look to them right they look like something that you could wear as part of your daily uniform and um, going there out there out and about and i'd imagine some people are probably going to end up you know splattering these in paint and making them look all funky and whatnot like they have a gallery or an art studio which they clearly don't just for the vibes it is what it is but the problem for me with this sort of stuff is that as good as it is to look at these images and to see this amazing product and to hopefully you know imagine a a future where you might be able to get them yourself that's one of the main issues i have with this for whatever reason crocs have now become a thing that's you know a, a footwear model that's kind of captured the public's attention everyone wants crocs everyone loves crocs and these collaborations are basically riding the wave of that success or that hype or that attention or maybe you said yeah other way around maybe the collaborations have basically started the wave wherever it is the fact that these collaborations are coming out thick and fast means that Crocs has definitely recognized that these are doing well. They've recognized that it's a win-win. You collaborate with a small brand. It reaches mass market. You sell it for the same price you sell your regular Crocs. And then Bob's your uncle, Granny's your aunt. Cool, it works. But for whatever reason, these Salili Benbury Crocs were incredibly difficult to get. Every time I've seen these drop online, I've seen nothing but people on Twitter, especially sneaker Twitter, footwear Twitter, complaining and moaning that you can't get them. They, you know, the back end of certain sites isn't working. And for whatever reason, it feels like they aren't fixing the problem. Now, maybe it's a calculated thing. And, you know, the cynic in me will believe that maybe they're doing this on purpose to just drum up interest and they're not willing to fix the back end of purchase of sneakers. But this is just a common thing that's happening for years and years. It feels like every t ever since I've been queuing outside of Foot Patrol and queuing outside busy workshops and, you know, um, Nike Town, whatever it may be to get shoes, it's always been difficult. And it feels like even though now... Even if, even though nowadays sneakers have become mainstream and everybody's basically a sneakerhead, it feels like the process of buying stuff that you actually want or that people are trying to make you want by making it limited edition, making it desirable, linking up with a, with a known person, whatever it may be, it's just more difficult now than ever to get a hold of these shoes because number one, the, the demand is crazy. And number two, the, the, the way of purchasing them, the back end, the, the, the retail platforms, the online shopping experience is so bad that I think for any sensible person who doesn't want to resell or who isn't that in love with sneakers, it only takes a couple of L's from sneakers for you to suddenly get disgruntled and to just not give a crap anymore, which I think is really dumb because the whole reason why they're making these shoes is for you to get hyped on them so you can purchase them yourself but i thought this interesting tidbit came out from Salih Bembry, courtesy of an interview he did recently with complex i think might explain why he ha he has such a laissez-faire attitude towards um getting these things actually in the hands of the customers that he's trying to design them for and also maybe the industry at large just not caring about fixing the process of buying sneakers and getting them in customers hands in the first place or fixing the the access to these sneakers in the first place or these footwear models wherever it may be i thought his his answer to this question was very telling in that you know do, do people hit you up a lot with like customer service inquiries like oh the shoe release didn't go how i wanted mm -hmm. and like do you feel any responsibility to be like oh how can we make this equitable how can we make this fair I mean, Sponge has customer service, yeah. but I kind of grew up in, you know, the Gnome de Guerre, like, mm. clientele, a life, you know, period of product where it was, uh, things were obscure. Yeah. 
And oh, I thought you were going to say talking about customer service where they just told you to kick rocks the second you walk into the I store. Didn't want, I didn't, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't <laughs> want to put I didn't, it like that. I didn't want to say that, but at the same time, like me being a one man team, like I'm definitely focused on like creating like good product. Mm -hmm. And uh, I absolutely have customer service and I care about my consumer because if yeah. I don't, they're going to walk away from me. But uh, I definitely am kind of regurgitating a certain culture that I grew up in in, in downtown New York of, of like it's like the liquor no i don't want to say it's the liquor store mentality but it's just it's just more like i want to create good things that a, a specific person understands and i almost only want to talk to them yeah but it's too late for that that's why i don't like this attitude it's too late for that sneakers have now become mainstream footwear's become mainstream that's the reason why these crocs have taken off in the way that they have it's not because a niche amount of people how we were back in the day right when you know when we were all queuing outside of sneakers stores and you know flipping shit posting on sneaker forums like nike talk and crooked tongues and what was the other one um oh, what was the other one called white and blue i forgot that one what it was called but anyway all these other sneaker forums right that was a certain place in time and for me personally i have many bad experiences to those places because a lot of those stores especially growing up here in london treated me like absolute crap at the beginning when i was trying to get into this stuff because that was just the attitude around it right from skate stores to street stores to fashion stores they kind of gave you the cold shoulder and after only spending an untold amount of money and going there time after time they maybe kind of warmed up to your presence and maybe saw that you weren't a poser and then tried to treat you nice which is a crazy shopping experience but it kind of is what it is but now that it's become mainstream and you have moms coming in and picking up sneakers for their sons and stuff the fact that they can go into a shop and you know maybe come across a sales assistant that still kind of fantasizes about the old days of flipping nom de guerre store and a life on rivington and stuff and kind of want to give the mum the cold shoulder or just be blasting flipping um black sabbath on max volume w when everyone's trying to shop and buy stuff it's just absolutely insane it doesn't make any sense there has to be some sort of middle ground some meeting of some meeting in the middle to kind of you know take that kind of coolness that made you know sneakers what they are now making it why, why people are so kind of in love with them but also making sure that the customers who have a different expectation of how they shop and how they buy stuff are also being satisfied because in general i feel like overall maybe it's unfair but most people don't expect to go to sites and try to purchase something and have to have seven different tabs open or access it through their phone or using vpns or bots and stuff just to buy fucking crocs it's absolutely insane and i feel like for whatever reason the footwear industry the streetwear industry in general perpetuates this lie this myth that for some reason nowadays even though sneakers is a billion dollar industry sneakers billion dollar industry everybody wants them that somehow they can't make enough somehow they have to pretend everything's limited somehow they have to engineer um artificial scarcity somehow they have to do allow backdooring somehow look at a look at flipping marcus jordan he's a good example he you know there's pretty much some strong evidence out there that he allegedly was backdooring his own shoes to sneak to sneaker resellers individually out from a hotel from a hotel he was staying in or whatever it may be has he been punished or taken off the you know the flipping list of people to collaborate with probably not but all of these heinous things are happening behind the scenes and then you have this perpetual lie that they are now passing on to a young designer like him Salih Bembry coming up who's obviously now trying to re you know write his own sort of story and set new trends and be able to inspire a whole new generation and he's now kind of perpetuating this idea that you know yeah it's nom de guerre it's this old school streetwear vibe that i'm on it's the flipping retail mafia you know you, you can't get this thing it's like no bro if you're designing crocs but you know you, you can't design crocs and then suddenly want to treat it like it's a flipping it's the first it's the first bape tea to come out of nowhere store in tokyo in 1997 that's not the same thing anymore they're crooks so if they're crooks they should be made available for everyone to purchase in some way shape or form and i still don't think that whole oh if you make all of them if you make them available to everybody this it's going to take away the uh the appeal i don't think that's the case because you're still talking to a small subset of people not many people are going to be willing to go out even if it's all in black and wear crocs in general even if they look like this even though in black and as they look quite mundane and quite subdued, 
it's only a certain type of person who'd be willing to put on a shoe like this, like a foam runner, like this, like whatever it may be. So the fact that you are unwilling to make them available to everybody is really concerning. And the fact that they've adopted this idea that we're going to just artificially make it harder for you to buy them so that you can come and try again every time and turning customers into flipping, um, you know, modern day crack addicts is absolutely heinous. I absolutely despise it. I despise everything about it because, like I said, sneaker industry is a multi billion dollar industry there's enough shoes out there to supply demand but they don't want to and they just keep making people dance for their flipping shoes and you know i just think it's deme demeaning um, i think it lacks respect it doesn't you know it doesn't do anything to um inspire or to basically push this thing forward it's just it feels like a cash grab after a cash grab after a cash grab and the only people that win are the influencers because they're the only people that seem to get every single pair that comes out and then lucky customers here and there who maybe have a lucky day like like me for instance i got l after l on sneakers app but then for whatever reason when the off-white jordans came out um the first ones um, I somehow lucked out and got four pairs in a row. Don't don't ask me how. I just somehow did. I think I got one on a raffle. I got one because I attended a an event. No, I got two because I attended events in tied in with a Nike Ten. And then I think I got another. I don't know how I got the fourth, but I got four in a row. So it makes no sense. So you know and then of course that little bit of hope that got because i got four in a row would then carry me forward to then keep putting in my flipping raffle for the sneakers app again knowing full well that that four in a row might mean that i might have like a barren streak of like 10 years of not getting any wins on a fucking sneakers app and i think that is heinous personally for me i think that's absolutely disgusting um but you know forever i think there are certain customers who actually enjoy being you know taking the piss out of as well so maybe this tactic does actually work but it would be nice if these were made available to customers to purchase it also would be nice if the designer would also be a little bit um involved in maybe you know making sure that there's systems and processes in place to make sure his fans could actually get a hold of the shoes and not have this like oh yeah i'm too cool to do that or you know what i'd much prefer him just to come out and say i'm the designer i just like to make cool stuff i don't deal with all the stuff in terms of getting in people's hands it's sad that people can't get them but that's not something that i try to concern myself i just focus on making cool stuff instead it's like nah nom de guerre a, a life rivington it's like come on bro what are you talking about man this is some madness you're designing crocs you know what i mean you're designing new balances these are brands worn by millions and millions of people all around the world they're obviously trying to um overtake nike and adidas in some way or maybe take some some of the eyes away from them and back onto their product if that's the case then you have to it put some processes in place to get them in more people's hands but i don't know maybe i'm in the wrong there let me know in the comments down below what you think i'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions regarding that one